Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, Old Tongue by Jackie Kay. Um, okay, and this is another one of uh, the poems by Jackie Kay where she, where she sort of talks about um, moving moving uh, location or like uh, moving to um, moving from Scotland to somewhere else. And she sort of describes how she um uh, what you call it how that impacted her and how that sort of affected her um one thing to know about jackie k's uh, poetry is that uh sometimes it's not actually uh it's not actually based on like a real story so a lot of times she'll write as if she's talking about something which actually happened and um a lot of writers will do this and a lot of poets especially will do this um it's not something new. People have been doing this for a long time. It's basically taking on the idea of putting yourself in the um, mind of someone or in the shoes of someone, and then basically trying to base, uh, you know, explain or think about, express what it'd be like to to be that person. That's the idea. So anyway, anyway, so whether this is actually true, like whether it actually happened or not, it's. Um, it's it's not something that we can say for sure. Um, so a, a sort of tip when appro when approaching writing in general, especially like poetry, I'd say is just assume that the person in the poem is not necessarily the poet. That makes sense. So basically, just that's why we call them the speaker. It's like a character in the poem. So just assume that it's a character in the poem. Uh, it's not necessarily the the poet. So you don't need to do like you know look at their biography or something like that to figure out what the heck is the poem about. You can just read the poem and stick to what the um, what the poem talks about. It's a good tip to keep in mind. Okay. So the poem begins, When I was eight, I was forced south. Not long after, when I opened my mouth, a strange thing happened. I lost my Scottish accent. So um, one thing to keep in, uh, one thing to keep in mind is... Um, or where where I should start maybe is, uh, with the title. So the title of the poem is "Old Tongue," which obviously tells us that the poem is essentially all about how she, uh, lost her Scottish accent. So the speaker has lost her Scottish accent and began to she has began to speak in a different way, specifically in an English accent. And the poem basically talks about how the speaker feels like she's being changed in some way and that she's not happy about this change. In fact, she'd like to uh, reverse it if she could. So she begins here by saying, when I was eight, I was forced south. So obviously just there, the key word is forced. Um, and this is the idea, again, like I said, that it's this change that she's experienced is not something that she chose to happen, but it was something that was forced upon her, uh, something that she was pushed into doing that she didn't want to do. Okay, not long after when I opened my mouth, a strange thing happened, I lost my accent. So again, this simple simple idea is that she changed, she moved country, and then the way she, she spoke uh, changed. Okay, I lost my Scottish accent. Now, with the word lost, again, it indicates, um, it indicates that it's not something that she has done by choice, or it's not something that she's done on purpose. But again, it's something which has happened, and it's not in her... It wasn't in our power for it to happen. When you lose something, it's it's not the same as giving something up. So if you give something up, it it's you're choosing to get rid of it. But if you lose it, it means it was um, in a sense uh, taken from you, or it was um, it, it it got it was removed from you without your without your choosing. Okay, and the idea of it being lost means you would like to have it back if you if you could find it. Usually when you talk about how you lost something, usually it's something it's it's talking about something which you find important or which you find um uh, valuable, basically. Okay, otherwise you wouldn't even think about it. Alright. So she goes on to say, she goes on to say, words, words fell off my tongue. Words fell off my tongue. Um and then what she does is she gives like a list of different uh Scottish words. And um, she's essentially saying that these are the kind of words which she, you know, she lost in terms of she stopped using them. Um, 
because obviously she's not in Scotland anymore, so people she's talking to, they don't understand what these words are. It's very interesting as well in that, uh, I would say, like, even many modern people who live in Scotland, many modern Scottish people, they probably wouldn't even understand what some of these words are as well. So, um, in a sense, the loss of the words or the the uh, the loss of the words is not just something which has happened, say, um, because the speaker moved to England, but it's also something which has happened just with the advance of time or as like Scottish culture has like moved forward. Um, like my own self, for example, I'm from Glasgow and I don't understand what some of these words some of these words are. I don't know what a tuktor is, yet, for example, stummer. I don't know what that is. The other ones I understand, but uh, those two, for example, I don't know. Um, so, uh, and again, I think this is part of why, now I know I said you shouldn't think about the poet, but this is part of why the poet probably wrote this poem um, in that it's, it's she would like to, um, I'm talking obviously for her here, I don't know if this is true, but I'm assuming she would like to have Scottish people, especially Scottish young people, uh, and those are the ones that study these poems in their school. Um, she would like to have them be connected with their um, heritage in terms of like language. So it's part of the reason probably why she wrote this poem and she included this long list of, of words. Okay, anyway, so she says words fell off my tongue. So again, it's it's the idea is that if, if something falls off something, again, it indicates that she didn't choose it to happen. It indicates that she's not exactly actively getting rid of the words, but they're just being taken from her or they're dropping away without her being able to stop them from dropping away. Huh? Something falls, it means it happens in a way which you don't want it to happen or in a way which... Uh, is out of your power, like an accident, something which happens, and if you could have prevented it from happening, you would. But um, um, okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so it goes on to say, my own vowels started to stretch like my bones. So she uses a simile here to um to pair up what's happening to her physically as she's growing up with what's happening to her um linguistically or um, in terms of the way she's speaking so as she's growing up and her you know she's getting taller and her bones are getting bigger um, the way that she's speaking is also changing the, the way that she says words is being extended um, and she's basically describing the way that people uh, in England or I should say certain parts of England the way that they talk um, that's what she's describing um, so uh, and I turn my back on Scotland. So at this point, she is saying that basically the way that she has is talking now has sort of completely changed. And um, she doesn't talk like anything like the way that she used to talk when she was living in Scotland. But now she talks in a sort of English accent using English uh, words in terms of like the English uh, dialect, uh, slang. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as opposed to like the list of Scottish words or Scottish kind of uh, dialect or Scottish slang, if you like, that she was using before. She's replaced it now with the English type. Okay, um, so she's going to say words disappeared in the dead of night. Um, and again, this is this is sort of um, this is sort of like, uh, what do you call it? Again, connecting to the idea of things being taken or things being stolen. Uh, people disappearing in the dead of night is a reference or could be a reference to um, in many kind of uh, dictatorships or many, many um, uh, tyrannical situations where the, uh, for example, like in communist uh, Soviet Union in the past or like um, in, even in uh, Iraq, I believe in the 90s or before that. <clears throat> excuse me, in the 80s and so on, uh, there was the idea that people would disappear in the middle of the night. Uh, there was an idea people would disappear in, in the dead of the night and they would just they would disappear and then they would be lost. Out. No one would know where they went. No one would know what happened to them. And it was just assumed basically that the, the government had taken them and killed them basically. So the what she's doing there, she's taking that example and combining it here with 
uh, her loss of words and that again they've been sort of taken from her they've been uh, taken away from her without her choosing and uh, it indicates that it's sort of like uh, there's something very wrong with what's going on almost like she's a victim of um, tyranny yeah? she's a victim of like a dictatorship that's what sort of is being connected here new words marched in again this is continuing the dictatorship tyranny uh, metaphor uh, uh, and actually it would be personification because words obviously don't march um, people march um, the metaphor here again is it's like an army so it's an army of new words which are being which are marching into her uh, vocabulary or marching into the, the way that she talks um, ghastly, awful, quite dreadful scone, scones or scones said like stones, scones like that so again she's basically describing that the way that she's started to talk now sounds like uh, how some people in England talk and I say some people because obviously England's England's um, big place and different parts of England talk in different ways uh, but she's sort of generalizing it here and, and um, essentially saying like this is how people in um, this is how people in England talk huh? uh, sort of also I guess there's some indication of um, uh, talking in a way which is I guess you call quote unquote more kind of posh or more kind of uh, proper, something like that, um, which she could be sort of hinting at the idea of um, how she, she's she been taught to talk in a new way, which is considered to be a, like more proper or more like, you know, the way that you should talk, as in uh, the Scottish way she used to talk was perhaps looked down on or was seen as like, uh, unintelligent that kind of thing um and so it was replaced by this new way of new way of talking yeah, and i i say this because it's it's like a one of the one of the themes which is sort of common to like modern um i think like modern education or like the modern um modern writing or whatever especially like in scotland is the idea of um taking taking like Scottish words which people believe were looked down on and so on and then sort of making them uh, putting them in the place of like no they're actually good or no it's actually like um, intelligent to use them etc etc so basically taking the prejudice or the stereotyping of someone that talks in slang you know the stereotype of that's a stupid person because they talk in a sort of slang type way uh, and trying to like fight against that or like remove that and and replace it with uh, no it's just another way of talking or it's actually a good way of talking something like that okay so um so i think this is the final uh yeah no okay so it's one more okay so uh then she goes on to say where did all my words go my old words my lost words so she's now asking herself like what actually happened and how is it that uh, she lost these words? How did her accent change? And um, she's asking herself, like, what, what actually, you know, where did they go? How is it that she, she lost them? And then she was on to say, did you ever feel sad when you lost a word? Did you ever try and call it back, like calling in the sea? Obviously, if you're trying to speak when the sea is moving, uh, the words get lost among the waves. That's the obviously the metaphor. Um. Uh, again, just sort of, sort of describing the feeling of, you know, the way that she's, the way that she speaks now has changed, and it's like she can't get those that old way of speaking back. It's like, and she feels very sad about that. She feels like she's almost lost. Um, she's lost like something special to her, and it's it's disappeared um, into the ocean, something like that. Disappeared to a place that she can't, uh, she can't get them back. I swear I would have taken them in, swallowed them whole, and knocked them back. Uh, so basically, if she could, if she could go back and and continue to talk the way that she used to, uh, she would like to do that. That's the idea. Okay. Um, English soil, my old words buried themselves. It made my mother's blood boil. Okay. I cried one day with the wrong sound in my mouth. That's a nice uh, phrase. I cried one day with the wrong sound in my mouth. I wanted them back. I wanted my old accent back, my old tongue, my dour, sore, 
Scottish accent. So sour is just a Scottish way of saying sour. Singy songy, I wanted to gie it laldy, which is a Scottish type of phrase. Okay, so again, just sort of continuing the same same idea, um, reflecting on how she's lost her old accent and she'd like it back. And uh, her mum wasn't happy with this new way of talking, indicating that the speaker's mum wasn't with her. Um, so in terms of key themes in this, in terms of key themes in this poem, obviously the idea of change, the idea of loss, loss would be a good one. Uh, that runs throughout her poetry, especially like uh, Lucasade or uh, or um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the the one about the flowers. I forgot the title of it. Uh, the tulips one. I forgot. I forgot what the the title of it is. The one about the flowers that her mum gave her. Her mum's sick in the hospital and all that. Uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, yeah, so that that's the poem basically. It's quite simple. It's just about loss, loss of accent, etc., cetera, uh, et cetera. And um, uh, interesting questions about this poem. You could say, you know, um, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to sort of challenge the poem or uh, take a different angle on it, be a bit more critical of it. Um, you could, you know, or ask just ask some questions of it. Um, yeah, being critical just for critical sake is not good. But uh, I mean, to ask some questions, you know, to think about it, think about it a bit more, a bit more critically. You could ask a question: Why is it? Why would it be wrong, say, to speak in an English accent as opposed to the Scottish accent? Um, is the Scottish one really better than the English one, or is the English one really better than the Scottish one? Um, after all, if if uh, if the Scottish one is good, then by extension the English one is good too. Um, so you could you could ask those kind of questions. Now, obviously, she's saying that she um, she isn't happy with the change because, to some extent, it was forced on her. Um, so I think to that to that extent, it would be it would be understandable. It's reasonable to to think that she liked how she talked, but then she was forced to stop talking that way, which isn't good. Um, but you, I think you can, I think you can kind of, you can get a bit, you can get a bit lost if you start falling into, um, into sort of reverse. It's, it's like basically, if you can, you can, you can take the, you can take the wrong thing of, uh, speaking in Scottish is not smart. You know, people have the idea that speaking with a Scottish accent is not smart. And then, and you're tr and you're trying to fight against that. You can go too far, and then you can sort of fall into the same trap, which is to say, speaking speaking in the Scottish accent is the best, and speaking in an English accent is not good. It's like bad in some type of way. So essentially, you don't want to. It's just a good little. It's a good little piece of advice or philosophical point. Um. Uh, there's a there's a quote but when uh, when. When fighting monsters, be sure you don't become a monster yourself. Now, obviously, this isn't anything to do with monsters, but the idea is um, when when sort of disproving something and showing something to be wrong or unjust, uh, just be careful that you don't sort of end up in that same place yourself in the reverse. Okay. Anyway, so that's the that's the poem, and all right, good.